Welcome to Public Pictures Theater and our feature presentation, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. This is a film based on a true story. It's about a boy born without a working immune system and thus has to live confined to a plastic enclosure to survive. However, as he progresses into his teenage years and finds love, he has to decide between survival and love. In real life, John Travolta fell in love with his on-screen mother, Diana Highland, over the course of the filming, despite the age difference between them being almost 20 years, with Travolta at 22 and Highland at 40. Highland ended up passing away from cancer on March 27, 1977, four months after the TV movie's broadcast. At the time, Travolta was filming his next big role, Saturday Night Fever. Travolta would go on to work with many of the people who were in Boy in the Plastic Bubble with him, including Werner Watson, PJ Souls, and John Friedrich. Watson was in Welcome Back Carter, Souls in both Halloween and Kari, and, and Carrie, and Friedrich on The Wanderers. Travolta's career after Boy in the Plastic Bu Bubble was littered with cult classics, including the aforementioned Saturday Night Fever, Grease, Pulp Fiction, and more recent films such as In the Valley of Violence, which is a Western. In 2001, a movie with a similar premise was released called Bubble Boy, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. We hope you enjoy tonight's feature presentation, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, on Public Pictures Theater. I've just come from the hospital. The tests are in, and you're pregnant. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Did you hear that, honey? Call me if I can be of any help with your decision. Yeah, I'll do that, doctor. Thanks very much. save these children now. But, but how can we make a decision like that for another human being? I mean, what if... Oh, Johnny, do you think we could live with it? Oh. <laughs> there were never two people in the world more meant to be parents than you and me. God knows that. I want to believe that. Oh, I want to believe that. to say something to your wife before...
May we have the air conditioning ducts and the heat vents closed, please? And no movement while the air settles. Is anybody down there planning on having an itch? Please scratch it now. Not later, please. Dr. Gunther, do we have to have all these people here? May we please clear the theater? I'm sorry. Please try to understand. We're private people. Begin the cesarean. Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch, he was born exactly like your first son, with no amenities whatsoever. But he's alive. How long does he have to stay in this? There's no way to know. Until we discover a treatment, until he develops an immune system of his own, he'll have to remain in his protected environment. Surely you can give us some kind of a prediction. I mean, are we talking about days or weeks or months? Years. Excuse me? Mr. Lubitsch, you may as well have it straight. We could get lucky, but your son could be here with us for the remainder of his life. Baby. Thank you for 
suppose we could devise some way of, of transporting him safely. And we could get them to go on paying for it and, and manage the million and one other things we'd have to. The sterilization of the food and the toys and the equipment. I, I don't think you realize what we'd be getting ourselves into if we did bring him home. Do you? You stay home and get some rest. I'll give him a big hug for both of us, okay? touch except for the walls of this plastic bubble and who may not for years to come is finally coming home for the first time today Everybody, please. How do you mind backing up just a little bit? Oh, my, I didn't realize he was so big. Isn't he adorable? Gina, come on back here. Well, you have to live in that thing for very long. Please, you know. no pictures. No. What is it like, Mrs. Lubitsch? Look, Never I've asked you nicely three times. Now, will you just leave us be? Mr. Lubitsch, won't you come out again and, and give us... Take one more step and I'm going to knock your damn head off. Now, get out of here. Come on. All of it. Back up. Oh, 
Champagne okay. Number's not listed. Well, we were just waiting for the proper time to say hello. I'm Pete Biggs, my wife Martha, and uh, daughter Gina. We live right next door there. Yes, I know. I should have been the one to welcome you into the neighborhood, but... Uh, yeah. It's a welcome home present for your little boy. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, please come in. Uh, I'm sorry when I haven't been that friendly, but we just don't have that many visitors. There, that's good, Daddy. Now put the blue in here. See if you can stack another blue one on. Oh, you're gonna put it up there, huh? Oops, oops. Here, try the. Honey, look who's that's here. Good. The bigs from next door have come over to welcome Todd home. Oh, look, Toddy. Hey, Toddy. Yeah, Todd. Toddy, look over there. Toddy, look who's here. This is Gina. Come say hello to Gina. Oh, yeah. Gina's uh, brought you a present which Daddy's gonna sterilize for oh, you. Hey, come on over here, Gina. Oh, Toddy. Oh, come on, say hi to Gina. Come on, Toddy. Yeah. Oh. Let me go! Let me go! Oh, he's not hurting you. He's just playing with you. next door to that kid. Oh, no, not really. Like, I hardly ever see him except for birthdays and stuff. Hmm? Half the time he's at the hospital anyway. Come on. Bird <laughs> Watching television, you know. He never comes out of his room. Does he have any friends? Mm -mm. Just old people, like friends of his parents. A bunch of doctors that come over, and some minister or something comes over once in a while. But no kids or anything. 
Oh, he has this little pet germ-free mouse, too. Don't you ever wonder what it's like in there? I mean, to be all by yourself like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But he's weird, you know? Like, I'm surprised he isn't looking at us right now. Every time I look up there, he's looking right at me. checkup. Uh, there's some news I think you might like to hear. Queens and check, Ernie. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, a doctor in Tokyo believes he may have found a treatment that might stimulate the development of the humoral and cellular antibodies. What kind of research has he done? Mm, so far, not too extensive. But by the middle of next Good year... Good news, Ernie. Keep me posted, will you? You really got it made, haven't you? Why do you say that? Because you got the best excuse ever devised by anybody to avoid growing up. I'm growing up, Ernie. Yes. Sometimes you're like an old man. And other times you're like a newborn baby. What does that mean? Why do you use that intercom when you don't need to? To give you a feeling of power over us? Is this your way of getting back at us? Oh, you're angry at me today, aren't you, Ernie? Yes, you're right, I am. Well, look, Ernie, you don't know any more than you did in the beginning, do you? I mean, so why should I care about what's going on out there? Why should I care about anything that's going on out there? Because there may be a cure at any time. The doctor in Tokyo, your own body. Oh, bull. <laughs> you know, I'm not so unhappy in here as all of you think. Really? I'll see you, Todd. television system. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And they want to know if you would like to use it to monitor some classes in the high school. What classes? Any classes you want. Come on, you're not afraid to test that brain of yours against the other kids, are you? No. Well? Honey, if it's too abrupt a step for you right now, that's okay. I didn't mean to sound as if I was pushing, but I could... I tell me about that doctor that Ernie was talking about last week. You know, the one from Tokyo? Well, we haven't heard anything about him yet, honey, but there is a hematologist in Finland. I've got to think got... about that, that school thing. May I please be excused?
classes on TV, and he chose our homework. He did? Yeah, come on. Come on, come on, my Hey, Gina, your true love has found you. <laughs> Todd, can you hear me? Hi, Dad. Hi. I want you to meet your homeroom teacher. This is Mr. Brister. Good morning, Todd. Uh, would you like to say something to the class before we begin? Hi, everybody. <laughs> So, if the Truman administration was the fair deal, and the Kennedy administration the new frontier, and the Johnson administration called itself the Great Society, what was the Roosevelt administration? Tom Schuster? Gwen? <laughs> Who's making that sound? <laughs> Gina Biggs? Uh, sorry, Mr. Brewster, I, I didn't read the chapter. Todd? The New Deal. Good. Now. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right. This has gone far enough. Unless every one of you want to be sent down to the principal's office, you'll cut it out right now. <laughs> Take him to and from the hospital in that small bubble. Why, uh, why don't they ever carry him outside or down to the beach or something? Well, they've been suggesting it for years, but Todd won't have any part of it. He says it'll make him feel like a freak being put on display. Gina, go over to the Lubitsch's. Ask Todd if he'd like to come to the Fourth of July party at the beach. Well, why don't you just call his parents or something? I want it to come from you. All right, I'll try. Uh, Missy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mrs. Lubitsch. Hi, Dina. Uh, is Todd home? Is Todd home? <sighs> yes, Todd is home. Go on up and thank him. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, aren't you going to say something? Like, hi? Hi. Hey, you know, I've always wondered about this. What's that? How come this part is open? I mean, don't germs get in? Oh, well, you see, behind this wall, there's lots of air vents that constantly blow out all the air so that so the germs won't get in. See this line down here? I can't walk past it. No kidding. No. You mean I couldn't put my foot over that line? No. Your germs get in. <laughs> Hey, Todd, my mom said that you've never even been sick or anything, not even a cold. Is that, is that true? Yeah, I like that. Wow. So, when are you supposed to get out? Oh, I don't know. Keep on looking for treatments, but they've been looking for them all my life. But my immunities keep on building up, I know that. So, even if they don't find a treatment, you'll get out someday, right? Yeah, someday. Well, um, the reason I'm here is, um, uh, I wanted to invite you to the 4th of July party at the beach. Um, if you can't make it, you know, everybody will understand, but at least you know that we wanted you to come. Well... Hope you can make it. Yeah, okay. Oh, Let's head out. Okay. Yeah. Pete, let's put it over here by the rocks. There's an outlet over there. Okay. No. Hey, Fred, could you give us a hint? Anything caught down here? Uh -huh. Yeah, could you get on either side here? Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm going to release it right now. Okay. There we go. Easy. There we go. Okay, let me get the uh, plug here. Gotcha. Honey, you want to turn the switch okay, on? Okay, I know. Happy Fourth of July, son. Okay, where's food? every morning. And, and I love to watch you ride them. You always talk like that. I love this. I love that. But I do. I really do. Yeah, but I mean, you shouldn't tell people. Well, why not? Because people think you're dumb. Oh. <laughs> so you like my horse, huh? Well, maybe I'll let you ride him when you get out. Are you really, Gina? <laughs> See you later. Yes? Really like me. 
<laughs> well, hold my hand and find out. part of the hospital anymore, Todd. You'll be staying here in the new Laminar Airflow Center. Because of what we've learned through cases like yours, we're now treating cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy, leukemia patients, all kinds of people, young and old, who've developed immune deficiencies like yourself for one reason or another. I've taken the liberty of tentatively selecting your roommate. A roommate? But if you're unhappy, I'm sure something can be arranged. Todd Lubitsch, meet Roy Slater. Hi. Well, I'll leave you two fellows to get to know each other. Hey, you've been in one of these things all your life. What's that been like? Me, I've been in here a couple of months and I don't know. I sure miss a lot of things. What's the matter with you? Tumor. So why are you in one of these things? The chemotherapy kills off all my immunities. You know, I'm really glad I got someone to talk to now. I mean, they tried me with a couple of others before. I'm sure the first one was even close to my age. Sure hope we can become friends. Hey! Hey, why don't you talk to me? I have so many things I want to ask you. Just let me ask you one question, okay? Okay. What do you do to start liking it? Todd? Aren't you going to answer me? You said I could ask you one question. Yeah, well, I didn't say I'd answer it. Just 
stop crying, all right? You mean it? Yeah, I mean it, you dorko. Yeah? When are you supposed to get up? I don't know. They tell me my immunities are building up. But who knows, I may never get out of this damn thing. If I was never gonna get out of here, I don't think I'd keep going on, you know? Easy, you can do it easy. You know what really bugs me? What? And when they discover the tumor, I was too young for girls, you know? Yeah. And now that I'm old enough, I can't do anything about it. Sometimes I just get so... I can't stand it. And I think of all my friends out there going to drive-ins and making out and getting all that action. You know, the first thing I'm going to do when I get out of here is get me to give myself a hooker. Wouldn't you be afraid of all the germs? Germs? I want the germs. I want to be dirty, really dirty, you know? I want to grow my hair real long and have a beard and a mustache. And I want to make it with everything that wants. Roy. Yeah? Do you ever, um... Do you ever, you know... <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Me too. Elsewhere in the news, astronaut Buzz Aldrin visits young Todd Lubitsch, the boy who has grown up inside a plastic bubble. That's Todd. I want to see this. Hold on. He's coming home next week. So what? Shh. Hi, Todd. You, you're Buzz Aldrin, aren't you? The, the man who walked on the moon. Oh, God, I don't believe this. You know, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Todd. I hear you have the record for the longest time in a command module. Yeah, I guess so. I got a little something for you, too. To Todd. Champion spaceman on Earth, Buzz Aldrin. Thank you. Hey, you spent some time in one of these things, didn't you, right after the moon flight? Something very much like it, Todd. We were in germ control quarters for several weeks. Oh, what was it like for you? The thing I remember most was the loss of freedom. You know, I felt like being in a fishbowl. Yeah, I know what you mean. Todd Lubitsch, the boy who has spent his life in a plastic bubble. <laughs> No, Tom, um, my parents are going to be home in a minute, okay? What is it with you and that freak? He's my next-door neighbor. We grew up together. Is anything wrong with that? Don't call him a freak. I think you're turning on to him. Oh, Tom, you're such an idiot. How long have I had lived next to him? Twelve years? I've probably spoken to him maybe a dozen times at the most. Every year, I got an invitation to his birthday party. And every year I went, I was the only one there, except for his parents. It's the only time I ever saw him, just once a year. Except for the 4th of July. Mr. Lubitsch? Yeah, what is it, Gina? I'm in a big rush. I hear Todd's gonna monitor some classes again this yeah, year. Yeah, that's why I'm rushing. I got books to get at the library and supplies to be up for the hey, store. listen, closed. I can do all that for you if you want. What's the catch, Gina? Well, the main thing is, uh, I feel bad about what happened, and I'd like to help out. And, uh, the other thing is, I, I'm broke and I could really use the money. Okay. That's a deal.
brought you the books and supplies that you needed. And your homework's in there, too. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, um, if you want me to bring any classwork with me to school in the morning, just, um, have your mom leave it on the front porch, and I'll pick it up on my way. July. And I wanted to make it up to you somehow. And when I saw your father at school today, well, well, I was going to do it for nothing. But then another part of me said, well. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. You're not mad at me anymore? Hey, um. Does that Mr. Brister look as old in person as he does on television? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Brister. God, I hate that guy. Yeah, me too. Hey, how come you're never wearing anything except shorts? It's because it's so warm in here. Really, Todd? I mean, when I come over, the least you can do is put on some clothes. <laughs> how long has it been since you've had a shower? Oh, I can't have showers. Bad Zer major production. You should see it takes a couple hours just to sterilize the water. It must stink in there. Oh, no, no, you're wrong. No, no germs, no smell. I don't know, Todd. I mean, it's just the principle of the thing, you know? Well, hasta mañana. Despite Wilson's stand on the League of Nations, Congress had voted against the entry of the United States. America now embraced a policy of isolationism, focusing her attentions inward on domestic concerns, thereby pursuing a course of action which was ultimately to pave the way for World War II. For tomorrow, we will read chapters four, five, and six.
I wish you wouldn't look at me like that. Look, I didn't come yesterday because I couldn't. Look, to begin with, Mr. Goodwin made me stay after class to rewrite that term paper for English Lit. And then I got called down to the principal's office for a nice little talking to. And then when I got home, my parents... Gina, you don't them. have to lie to me. I'm not lying to you, and stop using that thing. It hurts my ears. You can go now, Gina. I'm not your slave, Todd, so don't give me orders. You're just like everybody else. Nobody ever believes me. I'm flunking out of school. That's how come I had to stay. The only course I have higher than a D is in art. Oh, I, I didn't know that, Gina. Well, now you do. And you can forget about me coming over anymore. Since everyone else thinks I'm letting them down, the last thing I need is to get the same garbage from you. Gina, I'm sorry. Maybe I could help you. How? I can explain things better than those dumb teachers. I could teach you how to really concentrate. Do that? Sure. Hey, what's, what's my father paying you? Dollar an hour. Well, that's how much I charge. <sighs> Gina, you can see my rates. They're right over here. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. Maybe straight down like this. Well, which do you like better? I think I like it straight down better, don't you? You think I'm beautiful, don't you? What are you doing? I'm finished. Oh, of, of course. But wait until the others are finished before you hold up your answers. I'm sorry, Mr. Burster. Need a tan. Well, look at me. I look like a tuna fish. All white and everything. You know, you guys could use a little sunshine yourselves. Starting to look real old. Todd. Dad, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but it's true. I mean, you never take a vacation or buy new clothes. Look at that dress, Mom. Dad, you never do anything for yourselves. Do you ever blame us for bringing you into the world? Did you have a choice? Yes. Well, do you blame yourselves? Sometimes. Mom, Dad, I don't blame you for anything. Honest. I love you. I love you both. Don't you know that? 
I mean, look, if it weren't for what you did, I would have grown up in a hospital. You know, you should hire a nurse from the hospital to take care of me. So then you can go to some place you always wanted to go to. Todd. Dad, it would be okay. I'd love it. I mean, just knowing that you weren't spending your whole life on me. Okay? Do it. Sweetheart, I'll meet you outside. Rachel, don't forget to uh, test the backup generator at least once a day. And if anything goes wrong, uh, don't hesitate to call us. Don't worry about it, Faye. We'll be at that number. Bye-bye. Have a good trip. Yeah. Honey, I hope we're doing the right thing. So much could go wrong. Sure we are. This trip is for him, too, you know. In a little growing room. I don't feel like he can stand on his own two feet. You know what I think? What? I think part of the reason he wanted us out of the way was so that he could court his girl. <sighs> yeah. uh -huh. Todd! Bye bye! Goodbye, son. so I can watch you. Are you crazy? The two of us would never get you downstairs. Sure. Sure you could. Easy. See, I told you it would work. Okay, keep on going. Nice ladies. Oh, God. All right. A little more to left. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's it. Put me down. That's it. Thank you. Gina, come here. Rachel, would you plug me in in the extension? When she does that, would you turn off the battery? Okay. Okay. That's it, Rachel. There you go. Plug it in. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You can go now. Gina, ride for me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Gina, go around that tree and then jump over the canoe and come back as fast as you can. <laughs> Gina, you move so fast. What does it feel like to move that fast? Feels like flying. Gina, ride around me in a circle as close as you can, okay? But what about the cord? Well, what about the cord? You just jump that canoe, you can jump that stupid cord. Well, what about your nurse? Oh, this is the time of day where she drinks sherry. She just sit there and look at the plug, make sure that it doesn't come out, and then she'll get pleasantly bombed. <laughs> so don't worry about her, okay? Okay. I know you. You're, you're too talented to miss. Todd, you are really a weird kid. Do you know that? Yeah, I know it. Just do it, Gina, okay? Okay.
That was so great. I was so scared. Were you scared? Not once. Oh, I don't believe you. Mm. Aren't you ever going to get out of this thing? I don't know. I got a split. Listen, I'll be back later to help you get inside, okay? Which one is he? Well, that's Tom. Bruce drives a blue Chevy. Is he the one you're going with? Who says I'm going with anybody? Todd? Put your face up against the plastic. What for? I did what you wanted me to do, not do it. I said it'd be all right. Here, look, I'll show you. See? Pretty neat, huh? My goodness. That's got it. Okay, Todd, come on out. Last time, what's the first thing you do when you get to your home room? Pledge of allegiance. <laughs> the first thing you ding a ling. All right, all right. First thing I do is check the backup tapes. And? And the batteries. Come on, Dad, can't you go any faster? Just leave the driving to me. Okay, listen, the filters and the fans are fine, the batteries are up, but the pressure gauge on the main line reads 75%. Then what do you do? I don't do anything. I just stay there. I get my teacher to go get you, and then you take me home, right? Okay, good. But I want you to check everything on your checklist every break between classes. Or I'll break your arm. All right. Oh, 
Okay. Get your current where you find it. Think of yourself as a rechargeable flashlight. Because you want me to be bright, right? <laughs> Little joke, Dad. Very. Mr. Brister? Yes, Gina? I just wanted to say that uh, I think it's really brave of Todd to do this. And I think we should all show him how glad we are that he's here. Charge. It's what I'm doing right now. See, I'm recharging. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes? Do you ever feel like a visitor from outer space? <laughs> yes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Todd. Uh, we were all about to take a little walk over the football field. Would you like to come with me?
Hey, no more practical jokes. You can trust us. Yeah, I think we've grown up a little since last summer. Okay. Hey, when I pull this plug out, would you turn my battery on, that little black dial? Okay. All right, when I say ready. Ready? Go. Yeah. Hey, Todd. Yeah? There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Okay. How do you go to the bathroom? Oh, the same as the astronauts do. I mean... Sure. Sorry I asked. for a long time, any object, right? And then I, I let myself sink deeper and deeper inside my brain until I find this, this center place that I like. Have you guys ever heard of, of out-of-body travel? Sure. I saw a thing about it on Twilight Zone once. It's where you can leave your body and go anywhere you want. That's right. Well, I do it all the time. Oh, yeah? Where do you go? Lots of different places. But mostly the planet that I'm from, Thermopolis. Right. Oh, come on. I think I think it's a, an exchange program. You see, I was sent here, and someone from here was sent there. One day we'll be switched back again. If it weren't for this secret journal I found, I would have never known anything about it. Are you putting us on? No. Let me look inside that thing, Todd Lubitsch. Look at that straight face. <laughs> hey, no! I think you are from another planet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Hey, Tom. I bet you didn't know that uh, people on Thermopolis were stronger than uh, people on Earth. No kidding. Stronger in what way? Just stronger. Like, uh, for instance, I bet I could beat you at doing uh, push-ups. You talking about real money or space money? I'm talking ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Sounds okay to me. Let's make it the kind that you have to clap in the middle, all right? All right. Hey, Todd. Uh, do you think you should do this? I mean, what about your your hair? Ten bucks. <laughs> 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 
I gotta talk to you. I know, you're mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I'm mad at you. For embarrassing you in front of your friends? No, for nearly killing yourself, trying to show off for me. Gina, I was Todd, just... what if you had died out there? How could I ever live with that? I'm sorry, Gina. No, you're not. You don't care. You don't care what happens to you, Todd. Sometimes I think you want to die. You know, I was just doing it so you'd see. See what? That you're just as dumb as all the rest of them? Flexing your muscles? No, that you'd see that I'm not a cripple. And that there's nothing wrong with me except that I, I can't get out of here until they tell me it's okay. Oh, Gina, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of feeling like a hospital case. Like some weirdo kid who, who can't even breathe normal air because he might get sick and die. I just want to be like a man. Someone you could care about. Don't feel sorry for. Todd. Todd, I don't know what you're doing to me. And I don't know if I like it at all. I don't know anything anymore. Look, we were just supposed to be friends. I mean. That's all that was supposed to happen, right? I mean, can't we just, just leave it like that? Sorry. You want to watch the sports news on Channel 3? You can be pretty persuasive no. when you want to find something out. Hello? Gina? Hi. Um, you want to go to the beach tomorrow? you have had a spacesuit when you were a little kid? Oh, when I was little, I never even dreamed about going out. Only about people and things coming in. You were always riding your horse in. Yeah. And then I'd get on. And we'd ride and ride and ride. Inside your bubble? Yeah, always inside. All my life I've wondered what it's like to be you. In all my life, I always wondered what it was like to be you. 
I've always loved you, you know. Johnson Jr., Peter Justice, Dallas Kennedy, Todd Lubitsch. Todd Lubitsch. see me about. I want to know when I can leave, Ernie. Well, within the past week, I've been in telephone communication with a team of physicians in the Soviet Union. How soon could I leave on my own immunities? You know I can't answer that. What would happen if I left now? You're not actually considering... Would I catch something and die right away? I really don't know. You mean I might live? Yes, it's conceivable. Your body's been building up some immunities. But it's also conceivable that just a bad cold or a case of flu might kill you. I'm sorry, but we just don't know. Thank you for coming, Ernie. Todd. If somewhere in that brain of yours, you're actually thinking of... I was just asking, Ernie, that's all.
say if we up and ran away from the roaring crowds and the worn out city faces would they carry on and on when they found that we were gone or would they let us go would they tag along or would they not do leave us alone So long we'd live in the country. Leave us alone. We'd make it just fine. Happy in a one room shack and we'd not look back. Welcome back to Public Pictures Theater. I'm Dr. Jim Lentz, one of the communications media professors at IUP. And today, our feature presentation is The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. And we're here with Dom and Maria, and we are going to have a little discussion about it, and we'll have a lot of fun. So, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, what'd you think? I don't know. Like, I just thought it was kind of silly and super 1970s and... Nothing against like the story of having an autoimmune disease that puts you in a bubble, but I just I. But that's just silly. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I, I don't know if it's because I don't expect that to ever happen in my lifetime that I was just I unable to find it realistic. Yeah, but it'd be bad. 
I thought it was like, for the time, it was just, it was really 70s to me, if that makes sense. Well, there's like probably 70s. nothing more 70s than John Travolta. True. Okay, if one actor defines well the 70s, yeah. it's probably John Travolta. And funny enough, in this movie, he's just trying to uh, be staying alive. <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. Um, Dom, what'd you think of the movie? I honestly thought that it was a pretty good plot. I think the ending <laughs> necessarily didn't uh, flower me, but um, <clears throat> I think John Travolta, his acting is on point. So really, mm -hmm. like that's the main focus for me is how great of an actor he is. So yeah, and you know, through his career, usually his acting is is a, is lauded. Um, sometimes his choice of projects is questionable. Yeah, but uh, I know what you're talking but, about. But you know, he he does seem to always deliver on on whatever role he manages to get. And so, how realistic was the spacesuit to you? So oh. we're looking at this. You know, <laughs> he gets in the spacesuit, and the and the film is based, by the way, on David Vetter, and who said it was not believable at all for him because why would Travolta safely return to the bubble? with a suit covered in germs, yeah. right? Now I'll just take it off, throw it on the couch, it'll be fine. It's a logic problem. <laughs> yeah. It's a huge problem. So yeah. what, did you, what did you think about the space suit? I thought that like, it was actually kind of interesting, like a mobile bubble, but I also think that, yeah, walking back in once it was contaminated, if they had shown it being de decontaminated, it would have been like, okay. But because they didn't, it just seemed kind of um, just strange. It was... You know, and when you're writing screenplays like this, you've got to, to say, how am I going to handle the fact that there's some realism here that I've got to deal with, and then there's realism that's just going to bore the audience to tears. So, you know, we could have the scene where his mom and dad scrub him down in the suit so that he can wear the suit into the bubble and take it off again, but you'd get to the point where maybe you're like, I'm a little enough bored. Is enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you for all the realism. One of the things I think we see in the 1970s is it's the beginning mm -hmm. of made for TV movies. Up until that point, films that were shown on television were films that were first, first shown as theatrical releases. And I think for public pictures theater, this is a first because I don't think we've never done a made for television movie before. So the 70s really was the first time networks started saying, let's make movies and let's show them. And uh, so, you know, for this, this is kind of an experiment. It's part of an experimental time. It's when they're trying to figure things out. We've talked about that on, on other films that we reviewed, uh, Max Fleischer's Gulliver's Travels. We talked about how that was the second film, animated film, feature film ever made, and how they were experimenting. And so you got to kind of applaud them, even if it doesn't age really well, you got to applaud them for taking a, that stab and, and helping Somebody's got to push the envelope. Yeah. Right, because now Definitely we have a lot agree. of made-for-TV movies. Netflix is doing all kinds of yep. made-for-TV movies, and many of them look like, hey, this could have been released in a theater and we would have been thrilled with it. What was, what was the most memorable scene? Maria, what, did, what was the most memorable scene to you in the entire movie? I think one of the most like jarring scenes in terms of like, it was jarring to me, so it made it memorable, was when he was a baby and he was like choking, like the first night they got him home in the bubble. He was choking and they had to like put him upside down to get it out. That really surprised and like kind of scared me. But besides that, that was more of a jarring thing. That's why it was memorable. But I think the most like memorable, memorable like positive sort of moment was when um, Gina jumped over his little confined wheelbarrow type mobile bubble with her horse. I thought that was a, like a cute, like just nice scene. So that, that definitely stuck out to me because it was like, it was just showing that Gina was reacting positive, positively towards him and like she was feeling him. And it was like, after so long being alone, it's nice to see that someone was willing to like yeah. be with him. That human contact is really gripping. Yes. It really drives you in. Dom, what For me, you? it's the 4th of July shot when they bet money and she holds his hand and that's really when he starts to like fall in love with her even more than what he has been his entire life basically. All right. And you also see the sort of uh, cynicism coming out with um, society. The kids are sort of being mean to him. It's very like a uh, natural thing that many kids go through in real life and to see him go through that as an already isolated person is heart-wrenching basically. But that sort of sets up shots like um, yeah. 
the horse jumping over where he's finally getting out and like when he gets his suit and he's finally getting out there, it, it sort of like provides some dissonance for the resolution basically. Yeah, uh, so let's talk about John Travolta. John Travolta is still considered to be one of our finest actors and has had a, an amazing career. And we were talking about the fact that sometimes not all of his projects are all that great, but his acting is usually pretty solid in them. So what did you think about his acting in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble? Oh my God, I thought Johnny <laughs> Travolta was amazing in The Plastic Bubble. Oh, oh my. That's my uh, grease impression. I, and uh, we'll be right back after we get <laughs> Sandy, off. wait, don't go. And, no, that was fantastic. I won't even try it. That was, that was great. <laughs> Maria, do you want to do a uh, John Travolta impersonation? I don't have a John Travolta. No John Travolta impersonation? No, I don't okay. have Gina. I don't have the horse. I don't have anyone no, from the okay. plastic well, bubble. What did you think of his acting, though? I think, um, like, it made sense that he was kind of, in the start of it, he was kind of childish because he was confined to his house and his parents. So he never really had to, like, grow up. But then he sort of began to learn how to grow up as Gina came around. So I, I honestly, like, I believed him. He was, it, like, if, if you were isolated for so long, wouldn't your personality be kind of stunted? You know, that's yeah. what, that he definitely, I buy John Travolta pretty often, sometimes no, but I think his early career was definitely some of his strongest work, including this. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you, I, if, if I was stuck in a bubble for 16 years, I, <laughs> no one knows what my personality would be like. It wouldn't be the same, I can tell you that. And at the same time, um, Though he's in this bubble, when you see him on the teleprompter and he's doing like ridiculous stunts to kind of make the kids laugh, you start to realize like, oh, he's not really that weird. He's a normal kid yeah. like everybody else. And he sort of has this sort of way of like nonchalantly like shaking it off. Like, what are you talking about? I'm not like a freak in a bubble. I'm just a normal guy. So I think, I think that his acting was uh, great. It's John Travolta. How did this get into public domain? This is not that old of a movie, and as we talked about, it's a cultural touchstone. Do either of you know how this movie got into the public domain? Um, I think what I found was that it just sort of like lost steam, like after it sort of popularized the phrase in a bubble, or the politician did, and yeah. it, it came back to this. It just sort of like lost all of its selling power. Yeah, and if, if you know anything about that, please, on YouTube, in the comment section, Tell us what you know about this film losing its public domain. It'd be interesting to see what you've got to, to say. And we always love comments here at Public Pictures Theater. Well, that's all that we have time for. And so that concludes our feature presentation and our discussion of The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. And uh, Maria, Dom, thanks for being here. I'm Dr. Jim Lentz. And we'll see you next time on Public Pictures Theater.